Like what? <laughs> Hopefully Mother's Day will be together. I know! <laughs> <laughs> It's been interesting. Oh, yeah, I miss worshiping with, you know, and fellowshipping with everybody, you know, so definitely miss that when the church closed down. Um, you know, I think that it was just really cool for me to, I, to get to learn about myself. I mean, you know, I think God was like, sit down. <laughs> I remember being at church, so when it, we had it was hand sanitizer everywhere. Yeah, yeah. They were like, don't hug. The like, don't hug. And I was like, I'm a hugger. What do you mean, don't hug? It was, uh, it was Pastor Wayne's birthday, so I remember yep. we were all yeah. like, yeah. Yeah. but it was still like, don't hug each other, but yeah. you want to hug people. That's Jay walked on and like hugged somebody. I was like, see, we hug it. We hug it today. And then like the next Sunday, it was not it was existing. Done. Yeah. It, was, it was done. But then it was just like this shift of like thinking. I think that was the hardest part. Thinking stuff was going like, oh, just a couple of weeks. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. A couple yeah. of days and then a couple of months go. And now it's been a year. We've had two Easter's wow. virtual. Yeah. yeah. And wow. never in my mind would have even processed like yeah. that that would have been what it was. Right? Yeah. Last Easter, I was fine. Like I got up and like mm -hmm. went, went to church. Good. We had good worship on it last Easter. Mm -hmm. I mean, as yes, we do always. But then I, like, <laughs> then I was like, Oh yeah, and I got in my kitchen. I was like, I'm gonna cook some Easter dinner, yes. and something hit, and I was like, I'm by myself. This is all. When I was at church, <laughs> like it literally hit, and I yeah. was like, yeah, 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 yeah. I was like, I need a nap. When they took church away, I said, it's real. The <laughs> pandemic is real. We can't go to church. <laughs> but um, for me, watching it virtually and just the worship, it just hits home. I feel like. God's anointing just he knew he knew that hey everybody's gonna be watching not just the members but more people yes. so it was an opportunity for everyone to just just worship and be with God no matter and that just shows like the church isn't necessarily a building it could be anywhere oh yeah, yeah. the church is me the yeah. church yeah. is exactly. people yeah. Right. yeah what I love about it is when you're in that worship sometimes because you're in service mm -hmm. you know there's a timeline and so you have yeah. to kind of push it along but like you just said, Brandon, when you're in the worship, you can rewind it and you can stay in the presence of God. You can stay right there yeah. and you can keep doing it over and over again. So that's what has been really helpful for me is we'll just watch it on repeat and it'll just yeah. keep going. And when I feel like the spirit of the Lord is moving, I just keep rewinding and it just keeps speaking to me. It keeps mm -hmm. ministering over me. Wow. I remember this one time um, Lady Mai was leading worship. I don't remember what song it was. But towards the end of the worship, she literally fell to her knees. Yes, yes. that was the beginning. Yes. yes, I fell to my knees. Yes. <laughs> like, I, it was so you good. You could right. feel yeah. it. Like mm -hmm. I'm looking at it on my TV screen, but I'm feeling the presence mm -hmm. of God right yeah. there with her. Yeah.
you can build you can build your home right here right here in me build your home build your home oh build your home lord in every word that i speak in everything that i do i want to be a place where you can live where you can reside right here in my heart lord i'll stay We have an amazing God who called us all out of the graves that we were in. It doesn't matter what your situation, doesn't matter where you are, who you are. All of us have found ourselves in a grave at some time or another. Graves of depression, graves of anxiety, graves of fear, graves of lust, whatever your situation. You found yourself in a grave before, but our awesome God has pulled us out of those graves and we don't have to reside there anymore. And we celebrate that. I was buried beneath my shame Who could carry that kind of way? It was mine too Till I met you And I was breathing but now And all my failures try to hide It was my truth Till I met you You called my name so You called my name And I ran, and I ran out of that grave Out of the dark Out of the dark Into, into your, your glory. Yes, yes. Hey, you call me. 
Lord, we thank you that you rescued us. We thank you that you saw us where we were and that you said you will not stay there and you loved us enough to reach down and pull us out. When I was grown, you were my head. shelter. Now you call me a citizen of heaven. When I was broken, you were my healer. Now your love is the air that I'm breathing. I have a future. My eyes are open. And when you call my name, I ring, I ring my back. Out of the dark. Into your glory.
hallelujah it's just a blessing oh praise the lord hallelujah praise the lord hallelujah praise the lord hallelujah i'm free Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. We bless your name, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. We bless the name of Jesus. Thank you for freedom, King. So what made it so hard for y'all during quarantine? Like, what were some of the darkest moments? Definitely for me, one of the things is just the passing away of so many friends and family mm. and, and just people that I know of who've lost loved ones. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was just coming like, I remember speaking to my wife one day and I was just like, man, I just want to have one month where we can just have a break yeah. without getting news or without knowing of someone who passed away. Yeah. Yeah. So that was definitely difficult for me. Yeah. That was my, what I went through. My father died during the quarantine unexpectedly. Wow. And I learned how resilient I was mm. because I thought that it would break me. Like I really did. My dad was like life. Yeah. And um, I, I couldn't believe that I was like still functioning and I was still going and you know life was still moving and I was but I was able to really just sit in that yeah. and, and just go through it and say God you still have me even in this like wow. God you're still there even through this no matter what it's God that's the answer so yeah I I, um, I lost my grandmother during the quarantine and similar to what you were saying, whenever you lose anyone, there's grief, there's pain. But I think what was most challenging for me and my family was, she's in the hospital and we can't be there with her. Um, and then, you know, she, she passes and um, we're trying to funeralize her. We're trying to remember her, honor her memory, and we can't even gather, you know. we. We had to extend the period of when we would even bury her because mm -hmm. everything was backlogged. Wow. Um, and just thinking about, you know, all the rituals and things that we do to celebrate life and to say, like, this person mattered, they lived. And the, we weren't able to do that. Yeah. Um, I think I still carry a bit of that sadness mm -hmm. that yeah. she didn't get the honor that she deserved. It's heartache, pain is pain, trouble is trouble. It don't last always. For some, the struggle has ended, for some, it's begun. But when we look back, we'll see where we came from. We gotta believe what we pray, believe what we preach, believe what we sing about. Believe he's a king, controlling the narrative is out of our control. The only thing left to do is let go and keep going.
pandemic hit, my first thought was, do I keep this Jesus? Because mm -hmm. I don't know, right? Like I really don't know what's gonna happen. And I feel like it was an opportunity for God to really test my faith. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And when I tell you my consistent giving has led to blessings yes. upon blessings yes. upon yes. blessings yes. in the midst of mm -hmm. a pandemic, yes. it blew me away to see how much God provided for me. One of the coolest moments for me personally, I've been proud to be a member of Antioch. Yes. Watching yes. just the level of giving that the church yes. has done, to see Antioch really open their doors to yes. this brand new building mm -hmm. and pour out so much stuff for like yes. just thousands and thousands of dollars of just goods and just like, and to see the joy in people's yeah. faces. Mm -hmm. I, I missed the first couple of ones because of, of work. Um, so I was looking at the video, then I, I like emotional, mm -hmm. yeah. just watching yeah. people walk away just with just their lives just being shifted in a good way because mm -hmm. of a church that decided to say, hey, we're going to live by giving. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And then when I was able to get down there and see it myself, like I, I, I was just, I'm getting wow. emotional thinking, re-looking at the moments <laughs> yeah. now because it's just, it really showed what, what the church really is. Yeah. yeah. Um, that yeah. it's more than just, mm -hmm. um, you know, sometimes what we think it is. Mm -hmm. Antioch was literally the church. Yeah. Uh, and being a light in the midst of a lot of darkness for for thousands of people. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm so proud to be able to say um, and that I go here and that I'm a part of this family yeah. that yeah. really believes and stands yeah. what they say mm -hmm. is what they do. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, that, and that's been powerful. To be a part of uh, that giveaway that Antioch put on when they gave away so much to the community. Mm. I've never seen that happen. Never. Mm. Ever. At any church, anywhere. It, it was amazing. And I, I knew I, I'm, I'm blessed to be a part of it. I was, I'm was i blessed to have been a part of it. So there's three ways that you can give today. You can give online, you can text to give, and you can mail in your offering. Um, and so I'd love to take this time to pray with you all as you sow your seeds today. Father, thank you that we have an opportunity to give and that it is a privilege that we get to, to give and to remind you of your word that says, if we give, it will be given back unto us. And so for every seed that is sown, for every gift that is given, I pray that you would return it to them in, in immeasurable ways, that they would see overflow in their lives and that there would be abundance, more than enough. You know your children and you know what they are in need of. And so Father, would you meet their expectation in Jesus' name, amen. 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 Come out of hiding, you're safe here with me. There's no need to cover what I already see. You've got your reasons, but I hold your peace. You've been on lockdown, but I hold the key. Because I loved you before you knew it was love. I saw it all. Still I chose the cross You were the one that I was Thinking of when I rose From the grave Got rid of your shackles now Victory is yours I tore the veil For you to come close There's no reason to stand At a distance anymore You're already loved I'll be at sea and I will illuminate everything no need to be frightened by intimacy no just throw off your fear and come running to me yeah the girl.
So it seems like there's like so much uh, promise, like late in my uh, sermon last Sunday about like yeah. God is doing something new, you yeah. know? And mm -hmm. I think that's just like uh, spiritually, he's doing something new within the church and within our, each other, but there's, he's also doing something new just like in our world and our atmosphere. Yeah. I think that we're going to see a lot of good um, that came out of this. So yes, there's always light at the end of the tunnel. I'm excited to just see you know, everyone really just come through like. <laughs> it's this renaissance, so you can definitely feel the yeah, renaissance yeah, that's nice. happening in the arts and creative and ministry. Mm -hmm. And I think it's really just on on us, just corporately to make sure we don't go backwards. Yeah. You know, like if, it, if we walk in the new, if we say that 2020 mm -hmm. was your vision still, mm -hmm. it created this sense of now moving into all those things that I have in this new chapter of this new, the 20s. I love like Harlem Renaissance was one of my favorite seasons of life and it was the 20s, you know, it was all this depression happening, but some of the greatest art came out of it, some of the greatest creativity came out of it. Yeah. So here we are again in the new 20s, yeah. in the midst yeah. of That's just so a lot of just rough stuff, a lot of dark times for people. Yeah. And I believe the same thing, that sense of love, that sense of resilience, yeah. that sense of like yeah. palm trees, yeah. of just like, bouncing back stronger than we ever was yeah. before. Yeah, uh, and so, that, so that's really what I'm excited. Oh, word up in here. Yeah. Yeah. I was sick yeah. 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 So yeah, so that, that, that's what I'm excited about. Yeah. 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 Extremely excited about. Because we serve the ultimate redeemer.
with soldiers watched in vain was borrowed for three days his body there did not remain for our God has robbed the grave our God has robbed the Let's go. 
spirit I will rise from the ashes of defeat. The resurrected King is resurrecting me. In your name I come up alive to declare your victory. The resurrected King is resurrecting me. By your spirit I will rise. To declare your victory, the resurrected King has resurrected me. In your name, I come alive to declare your victory. To declare your victory. To declare your victory over sin in my life. To declare your victory over depression in my life to declare your victory over every mountain I face to declare your victory so that someone out there might know your name to declare your victory cause I've seen you work miracles over and over again to declare your victory cause I know what it feels like to have my heart mended I know what it feels like to be loved past my flaws. I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe you did it just for me. I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe you did it just for me. So someone might say, who is this God? about your circumstance is resurrecting that doesn't always mean that something is going terribly wrong in your life that God needs to change around what it simply could mean is that even if God has elevated you even if God has you in a place that feels better than maybe a low place that you've been in before there's still higher there's still more there's still greater that he is calling us to, that he is elevating us to. The more that we lean into him, the more that he is able to move us exactly where we need to be and position us exactly where we need to be. So when we sing these words, that he is resurrecting me, we mean it from the depths of our soul. Unison one last time. Say by your spirit, from the ashes of defeat, the resurrected Resurrected in your name. In your name I go to declare your to declare your victory. The resurrected Folks, thanks so much for being here. I hate I didn't make the conversation earlier, but I was ear hustling from the side. I didn't want to just jump in the scene because there, there were moments happening. How have y'all been? Good? Good? Yeah? Yeah? Somebody asked me when I walked in how I was doing. I told them mountains and valleys all at the same time. Sometimes that's how it happens. Uh, but I'm grateful. I'm grateful to be this far, and I'm grateful that God's brought us through this. And I'm looking forward to, to what's ahead because I believe... Uh, it's quite a bit ahead, quite a bit ahead. You know, it's, it's Easter. The resurrection depended on which church you grew up in. You know, sometimes I say, you know, Easter, and then I have folks say, how dare you call it 
Easter, and then I, you know, the pendulum swung the other way. It's Resurrection Sunday, and you know, the people that weren't, you know, hardcore didn't know what we were talking about, so they didn't come to church, you know. <laughs> so I just do both to cover <laughs> to cover all sides. But hearing the journey, the ebbs and flows, and where you've been, it brought it brought a scripture to mind from different lenses or from different vantage point this Easter. I don't think we've ever celebrated like this. I mean, last year we were all sitting at home. I was talking to a camera in an empty room. One day we're gonna gather together again. We're somewhere in between that right now. So I appreciate you being here. I was so tired of looking at cameras and talking to cameras with no amen. So if you wanna shout and run, it's not, I don't know if it's gonna be one of those messages today, brother, but I mean, you know, listen, feel free. I, I'm, I'm about to run on anything, you know, after being in the house for a year. but. In Matthew 28, we get the fifth verse, it says, the angel said to the women, do not be afraid for I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, he has risen just as he said. He has risen just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go and tell the disciples he has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. And I love the way he ends this. He says, now I've told you. Now I don't know if he just said, you know, no, I have told you. The way they do it on the Jesus story on TBN, I, I figure he had a little attitude, you know, to get him going, you know. Now look, I done told y'all. <laughs> Go meet him there in Galilee. Let's pray. Father, we are so grateful, thankful for this time you've given us. I, I thank you for proximity. I, I thank you for what I will never take for granted again, that is the fellowship that we have. As we gather together, grateful, thankful that you've made us family, whatever our background, ethnicity, you've made us family through your death on the cross, but your resurrection that we celebrate today. We'll never forget in Romans it said, the same spirit that raised Christ Jesus from the dead will give life to our mortal bodies. So we celebrate you rising, but realize that there's no adversity we can't rise through because of what you've done. There's no pain that will steal joy ultimately. There's no disease that will rob us of eternal life. And for that, we're grateful, we're thankful. May your presence be felt here now. And for all who are listening, we'll give you glory for it, honor and praise in Jesus' name, amen. I think we look at this narrative, this Easter narrative, from a supernatural vantage point. And I think that's significant. We should view it to a certain degree from a supernatural standpoint. It is, in fact, the most supernatural event of all time when we consider all that opposed Jesus as resurrection life from the Father elevated him from the place of true death. We now all follow him in that that train of, of glory, victory over death. There, that, that was extremely supernatural. And I, over the years, have emphasized that. Every time we gather together for Easter, I, I emphasize the, the resurrection. And that's an important thing to emphasize on Resurrection Sunday, or Easter for that matter. Listen, I've been in places where there was no resurrection spoken of on Easter Sunday. So we're gonna make sure we do that. But with that said, I feel like there is a thread. There's a thread that runs through not only this passage or narrative, but it runs through many narratives in scripture. And again, we always focus on the highlight, the, the person that was healed, the, the individual that was delivered, the resurrection of the Savior against all odds, the supernatural miracle. But what I was captivated by as I listened to my brothers and sisters as they caught up on this couch was 
the human narrative amid God's activity on the earth. Because God's always moving. God is always up to something. Sometimes it feels favorable <laughs> to us. Other times we're on the other side of that narrative. I know we're going to get to the resurrection. That's what we're here to celebrate today. But I think it's important to think about the characters that surround the resurrection. I know you see Jesus as the God-man who's come to earth to deliver sinners, to put them back in right standing with God. And you would be right in coming to that well-informed conclusion. What I want to emphasize is, again, that was the movement of God on earth. God is always up to something on earth. From the time that he spoke everything we see into being, into now, God is always moving on earth. Sometimes we have his perspective. Sometimes we don't have God's perspective. Uh, Blue is clue. It goes a little bit better when we do have God's perspective. It's a little bit easier when we have God's perspective. I wish I had time to talk about the fact that God does not always bring us out of difficult circumstance, but what sustains us often is God's perspective even in difficult circumstance. I wonder if I have any witnesses at home. In fact, if I have any witnesses here, you can holler back at your boy. <laughs> Does anybody know what it is? For God not to deliver you from everything you're facing, but more specifically to, to give you his perspective in difficult states, in difficult circumstances. And before you even deliver, that changed your perspective. Oh, maybe next week we'll talk about joy and what joy really is. Joy is not absent opposition. But joy is often in the midst of opposition, that supernatural life of the Holy Spirit that wells up and sustains you in difficulty. On this first Easter, the events that preceded it and followed it, in many respects, mirror the time we live in. You know, some put this at 29, 30 AD, we're in 2020, but like a familiar drama, not that kind of drama, I mean um, Broadway musical kind of drama. The, the dynamics often stay the same, the story is the same, the characters just shift over time. They tell me that Phantom of the Opera is the longest running Broadway musical. Angela, you didn't know I knew that, did you? <laughs> See, I'm, I'm a cultured brother. I Googled that before I came, right before I came, but I just thought it would be impressive to the thespian in the room, right? And while the story's the same, it's familiar, we know that story, the characters over time have shifted. I mean, it's the same dynamic, the same arc, but the characters over time have shifted. As I listen to everything that we spoke about, that you spoke about on the couch as it relates to last year and some of what you experienced at home as it relates to what most would call the most difficult year of their life. Now, I don't want to pull you back down into depression here on Resurrection Sunday, but we've gone through some things. We've, we've lost some people along the way. I've lost a, a few friends, a couple relatives along the way. We, the, the sky fell a few times. As I shared, the same arc that we saw or we're seeing in 2020, or if we go back and look at this original Easter, the resurrection story, what preceded it, what followed the resurrection, we see the same themes, we see the same arcs right there. We see moments where everything was smooth, everything was copacetic. We see Jesus, the Messiah himself, enter into trial. Not only does he enter into trial, but he enters into death, dying. He's <laughs> raised from the dead. We experience resurrection. There are these ebbs and flows as we look at that account. But again, my focus is not just on what took place with Jesus. But if we were to see Jesus as God's activity on earth, 
his primary activity, his primary movement was contained in the person of Jesus. That's why when they asked him about the kingdom of God, he didn't explain it like a movement that was coming alone. He said the kingdom of God is coming and now is. In other words, it is an expanding movement. But it's already here because Jesus was the kingdom of God personified. He was the greatest movement of God embodied on the earth in his lifetime. So if we're to think about how things were copacetic, and then there was trial, and then from trial there was death, from death there was resurrection. And if we pan out just a little bit more from the scene there at the cross, as we look for these scattered disciples, could you imagine what was in their mind surrounding or at this moment? We're going to get to one of them, but before we get there, I mean, imagine the other disciples who, who I'm sure dreamt about what life would be like as they walked away from their business, as they walked away from it wasn't much but their stable source of income, and they went all in with Jesus. Now, he's been preparing them for it all along. He told them it was coming, but I, I don't know that it really set, set in that their conception of their life and where their life would be and what their journey with Jesus would be like. I don't know how the words of Jesus concerning his death and what was necessary, how it interplayed and mingled in their mind. I, if I had time, and I know I know, I keep saying this, but if I had time to work this, I, I would a little bit because often there's a word from the Lord and our expectation of what walking with God looks like. It gets mingled in our mind. And so that when it plays out the way God said it would, would play out, there's profound disappointment. And I'm not on the super saint bandwagon on this one. No, and I identify with the, the, the human side. I identify with the frail side. I identify with the God, I thought you said right. side. Only to find that we're like many of the disciples when our journeying with God is tested. And when, again, his movement on the earth doesn't follow the trajectory we had in mind. I'm sure as they rolled with him, they rolled with the man. He would show up. They had VIP tickets to every event. Now, listen, I have friends who are professional entourage members. <laughs> you know, we have friends that play sports. They're professionals. I mean, they are proficient. And I'm not mad at them. They've made a good living on being entourage members. But there's this, there's this nagging suspicion that at any moment, if our boy who's out on the field blows his knee out, this is all over. If, if Champ gets knocked out, <laughs> this, is, this is all over. I can imagine them walking with Jesus, enjoying the ride, the camaraderie, the fringe benefits and the perks, the accoutrements of, of walking with the Messiah. There, and there are some accoutrements. But those come to an end as they watch all, not only his physical body die, but as his physical body died, some of their dreams, their hopes, their aspirations, their plans died with him. If I had a little more time. I want to ask someone, has, has your dream ever died while walking with God? The way you saw it playing out, has, has, has your conceptualization ever been crucified and you're forced to live on beyond what you thought would happen? the way you thought it would be? 
I'm sure these men had to go back and try to figure out what they were going to do with themselves. If you've ever stepped out by faith because God told you to start a business and had to go back for your job back, <laughs> you're in good company. I, I can imagine them. In fact, we find them back out on fishing boats. <laughs> they had to go figure out how to get their startup going again. As they sat and got the report about Jesus' death, I'm sure at that moment there was disappointment. It's the same theme we see running from the first century all the way through our lifetime. It's the same arc but different characters. Whether it's 28, 29, 30 AD or whether it's 2020, 2021. Walking with God sometimes will bring disappointment because things don't turn out the way we expected them to turn out. These men had to go find and women, for that matter, had to go, go find something to do because their hope and aspiration died when Jesus died. Have you ever been disappointed as you observe God's movement on earth where it looks like it starts with promise but about halfway through it just drops off and dies the job you thought was going to take you all the way to the top <laughs> put a pink slip in your box the relationship I mean, you, you making all kinds of connections. Oh, you don't step on cracks either? <laughs> and thought it was your soulmate. It came to nothing. <laughs> the ministry you had in mind was frustrated because though God sent you to do it, it seemed as if you're the only one that got the memo. No one showed up to your party. And this journey with God, whether it's in the first century or whether it's 2020, 2021, there's disappointment. As they are left there in the valley. Why do I call it the valley? Because they're, they're situated now. We've read the story. We know the end, but... Before this resurrection, they're situated in between two highlights. As they look back over their shoulder and consider the days that they walked with Jesus, they were amazing days. They were good days. They watched miracles happen. They saw him supernaturally provide. They, I mean, they, they, they heard teaching that angels long to hear. I don't know about you, but if you've ever been in the center of God's will, I mean, in proximity to the Messiah, it's no longer about money. It's no longer about comfort. It's, it's no longer about simple pleasures of life. But when there's proximity, and you hear the authority of the instruction coming from his mouth cloaked in love. In those moments you say there's nothing greater, nothing better. For a moment in time everything is suspended and your worries are pushed to the periphery. I say they were in a valley because before this crucifixion they had experienced that glory. We know that Jesus would not stay dead because on Sunday morning, I know we're sitting in a loft and we're downtown L.A. and we're, we're club fly right now, but I, I, I feel a little churchy. Early Sunday morning. My grandfather used to say, I said early. Sunday morning, he got up with all power in his hands as the glorious and majestic Savior. They went from glory to 
as they communed with him. And eventually would get to the glory of the resurrection. But the difficulty was in, the, in between. I've come to talk to somebody on this resurrection service, on this resurrection Sunday, about the in-between. In the in-between, it can feel as if God has forgotten about you. In the in-between, your grand vision of being used for God's purposes can be forgotten about. In the in-between, there are people that used to walk with you that no longer walk with you. The crowd gets thinner in the in-between. In the in the in-between, you're wondering if the words that God spoke would ever become a reality. In the in-between, you wonder if God is still good, if God is still favorable, if God is still righteous, if God is still a man of his word. And then between, I've come to declare to you that there is always in this theme, in this arc, in this drama that does not change. The characters change. But the theme does not change. And I came to declare to someone, you are in the same narrative and you've seen the valley. You've seen the in-between. You've seen the loss. You've seen the despair. You've seen the hopelessness. But God sent me to declare to you that this is not where it stops. This is not where the story ends. This is not where you die. This is not the valley that you stay in. I declare to you that it's written into the script. God, I feel this. It's written into the script. The characters change, but the script is the same. And as long as you walk with God, there may be days where your proximity may not feel the same. There may be days where you come off of the mountain and find yourself situated in the valley. But God sent me to declare that there is another mountain ahead. Get up, put one foot in front of the other. I don't know when it is. I don't know what the opportunity will be. But God sent me to declare to you that resurrection is is coming and it's no mistake that on this resurrection Sunday the Lord speaks and says there is resurrection the prophetic season does not always line up with the calendar season or with the liturgical calendar, but every now and then the two come together and the Lord is saying that resurrection is coming. Don't die in your in-between. Resurrection is coming. This is not where you die. Resurrection is coming. I know you gave up your last, but there are resources that you weren't anticipating that are on the way. Resurrection is coming. I know you've been the butt of jokes and people have not been there for you, but God has people that you have not even met yet who carry the very thing that you need. Resurrection is coming. I know we've gotten more reports about death. We have about healing and miracles in this season, but God wanted me to remind you, no, we're not going to stay dead forever. We're not going to stay down forever. He's still the God of miracles, and there is a miracle ahead. There's a season of miracles ahead. The day will come again. We won't be bracing ourselves sitting by the phone for late night phone calls wondering who died now. But the day is coming where we'll be sitting by the phone and we'll get reports of God's goodness because people couldn't wait long enough for the morning. They will have to wake us up at midnight reporting the goodness of God, reporting healings from the Lord, reporting a touch from the Lord, reporting promotion where there had been demotion. 
written into the script. The resurrection is coming. I declare over your houses. I declare over your lives. I declare over your resources. I declare over your bodies. I declare over your circumstance on divine authority what God declares. And that is that the same spirit that raised Christ Jesus from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies. I speak it now. I thank you, God. I thank you for the resurrection of your son. But I thank you for the resurrection of every one of your sons and daughters. I thank you for the ultimate resurrection. But I thank you, Lord, for the resurrection of vision. I thank you for the resurrection of dreams. I thank you for the resurrection of purpose. I thank you for the resurrection of joy. I thank you for the resurrection of ideas. I thank you for the resurrection of resource. I thank you for the resurrection of victory in circumstances that have been adverse. I thank you, Father God, for the resurrection of the stirring of gifts. I thank you for the resurrection of the prophetic in our day. I thank you for the resurrection, Father God, of healing in our day. I thank you for the resurrection of the clarity of teaching in our day. I thank you for the resurrection of those who have drifted away from your purpose, who you've called to be apostles and prophets, and evangelists, pastors, and teachers. I thank you, Father God, for the resurrection. Though we've laid dormant, Father God, though the earth has gone quiet, Quiet. I hear a shaking. I thank you, God, for a shaking of your spirit. Lord, I thank you that your shaking has shaken all that is not like you. Lord, for resurrection, I thank you for new life. I thank you that it will not look the same on the other side of resurrection. Your son healed before resurrection but walk through walls after resurrection. And right now, Lord, though it's been good and there have been wonderful things that have happened that are behind us, I thank you now for things that we didn't even know to pray for, for categories of blessing we didn't even know existed, that you will do through the same Spirit more than we could ask or think according to the power that is at work in us. Now, God, we celebrate you for being the resurrection and the life. Wherever you are, just begin to celebrate him. Wherever you are, just begin to worship him. Wherever you are, begin to worship him. Just flow with me. Wherever you are, begin to lift your voice and worship him. Worship him. As you lift your voice, your circumstance is lifting. As you lift your voice, your countenance is lifting. As you lift your voice in worship, I feel hope arising right where you are. Lord, we thank you for resurrection power. In the name of Jesus, we thank you. We praise you. We glorify you, God. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, let's just worship him. Let's worship him. Come on, worship him prophetically. Just worship him. Worship him, worship him, worship him. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, Rabashe, Kera Robose, Radaogo, she and the Rabase, Kera Bashe, Raraboshi and the Rabase, Kera Bashe, Roku, Ranabokosi and the Rabashe, Rabakira, Mirabosi and the Ragaboroshe. God, we worship you. We worship you. We worship you, yeah. We worship you until life comes back. We worship you until joy is restored. We worship you until we get your divine perspective in crazy circumstance. We worship you until doors of opportunity open up. We worship you until we see a way where there was no way. We worship you, Father God. Because you're worthy, you're worthy, you're worthy of it. You're worthy of it. 
So now we give all these things to you, God. We praise you and glorify you that you are the resurrected King. And as the song declares that you, the resurrected King, have resurrected me. You've resurrected every single one of us. And Lord, even before circumstances change, we declare victory in you. For it is in you that we live. It's in you that we move. And in you that we have our being. In your great name. The name that is above every name. The name at the name that every knee bows and every tongue confesses. We declare it to be done in Jesus' name. All those who agree, I want you to say amen. 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 Listen. If you're sitting at home and you want to know more about this Christ that we've spoken about, he came to pay the penalty that we ourselves deserve for every mistake we've made, every step we've walked outside of God's will. He took your punishment, my punishment upon himself, he became the perfect sacrifice but also the perfect gift. Well, God doesn't force himself down your throat. It's a free gift to receive his finished work. Well, often we end there. That's not where we should end because that same spirit that raised Christ from the dead is at work in every born again believer listen I, I've seen miracles we've all seen miracles God supernaturally moving in inexplicable ways we've had unusual joy and comfort in adverse circumstance we know that's not just mind over matter or renewing our thinking that is Not a mental strategy, but the person where God comes and dwells in us as we put our faith in Christ. His, His Holy Spirit comes to live, not around us, not among us, but in us, to take us beyond our own ability. Allows us to not only have victory over death and the grave, but over the power of sin at work. That thing that short circuits your purpose, that interferes with your frequency as you seek to connect with God. If you've never made Christ the Lord, the Savior of your life, I want you to click on that link that says connect so we can share more with you about this Christ we put our faith in and about this walk that has changed our lives. Then finally, if you don't have a church family, a church home, or you need prayer, we pray 24 hours, well, maybe 24 hours a day. We pray a lot, <laughs> but for sure, seven days a week. If you click on that link and fill that card out, we'll be sure to, to pray for you every single day of the week. If you'll promise to do something, if you'll promise to, to let us know when God starts answering those prayers, that's what keeps us fueled. These people are not paid to do this, but they just love you and want to see God's best for you. Keep them fueled by letting us know when God is moving and answering those prayers. If you don't have a church home, we would love to be your church. I would love to be your pastor. It's a great group of folks. There's more members than this, but listen, it doesn't get any better. And so we would love to welcome you into the family. If that's you, I want you to click on that link that says connect and we'll be sure to connect with you right away. Now, God, we thank you for being the love in every believing heart, the peace in every believing mind, the breath in every believing spirit, and the life in every believing soul. And we say, may the saving grace of our Lord, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and the sweet communion of his precious Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide now, henceforth and forever. 
as we're becoming more like Christ, our environments are becoming more like heaven, as we're living in resurrection power, it will matter that we live. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Go in peace. We love you. See you here next week.